How do you make co-working work? The way we work is constantly shifting and changing. Companies, entrepreneurs, and individuals are moving to co-working facilities. By 2022, over 5 million people will be working in co-working facilities. In this series, we're going to explore how to make co-working work for you. Hi, Mel Mitchell here, and welcome again to Co-Working with Mel. So today we have Danielle Reedy with Xenos. So have you ever wondered how do you stay connected with your team, manager, the entire organization while working remotely? Guess what? We're going to talk about that today, and you're going to walk away with some insight on how to keep those conversations, communication, and connection going. All right, so welcome, and here we go. Hi, Mel Mitchell here, and today we're here with Danielle Reedy with Xenos, and uh, she's just going to tell us a little bit about our company and some of the things that she does, and also her company actually is based in Austin, right? Mm -hmm. And so That's you're correct. working remotely here. Mm -hmm. So, so tell us a little bit about your role in your company. Yeah, so I work for Xenos. It's an mm -hmm. IT monitoring, uh, infrastructure monitoring okay. company. Um, and so really we help businesses keep running as far mm -hmm. as staying up. So there's ever an IT outage, we can let an IT organization know that there's an issue and they can react quickly, okay. um, or we can even let them know ahead of time to avoid that outage. Wow. Um, so I'm actually on the marketing side of the house okay. and demand generation. Um, so I have a specific focus on some of our technology partners. Mm -hmm. um, so it's creating uh, various campaigns that support the message of how we work with these tech partners. Okay. Um, just really because IT in general is just such a large environment that right, right. everyone feeds off of each other. Mm -hmm. All different softwares um, really integrate with each other. And that's really what Xenos boasts in is the fact that we integrate so well with a lot of other technologies. Okay. Um, so that's really my focus there. Nice, nice. So you guys integrate with various cloud technologies, mm -hmm. business related tools, all those things? So it's more so on the operations side. Gotcha. So okay. IT operations management, okay. we integrate with all of those types of tools. So um, whether it be uh, ServiceNow, CMDB integration mm -hmm. or ticketing, um, or even monitoring your cloud environment. So okay. like Google Cloud or Nutanix, hyperconverged infrastructure. Mm. Um, so um, we can tell you um, really how your services and how your infrastructure is operating and the mm -hmm. health of those from top level all the way down to the nitty gritty of how your servers are running. Wow, mm -hmm. excellent. And we integrate across, across the infrastructure. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, and with your company being based in Austin and mm -hmm. you're here, mm -hmm. how does that work? <laughs> I know, yes. because we, we live in a remote working world, right. but it sounds easy, but it's not all the time. So, so just curious, how, how do you make that work? So it was actually, my experience was pretty hybrid. So I mm -hmm. started off um, based in Austin, okay. working for the company for about a year and a half in the headquarters. Mm -hmm. um, and about a year and a half in, I actually made the move up here mm -hmm. um, and started remotely. And okay. it was really interesting because I worked primarily from home for about nine months, I would mm. say. Um, and I'm by nature very, very yes, social. Yes, yes. And my dog was not uh, providing enough conversation mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. social interaction. And um, so I started to look at different alternatives. I love the company, respected the company, and very thankful that they allowed me to continue on in my role right. um, and even take on new responsibilities while not living in Austin. Right. Um, and so I joined a co-working space. Um, mm -hmm. And so I still actually go to Austin about once once a month okay. because to a degree, yes, remote is great, but you know, there is a component of getting that refresher of, True. oh, hey, I see yeah. you more yeah. than just the, on video. The, the face to face Exactly, works. Yeah. yes, yes. And so, um, you know, I think the fact that I worked in the office and grew relationships mm -hmm. initially, I think really helped with my success, being mm -hmm. able to continue um, continue on and even expand my role a little bit as okay. far as on the remote side. Um, but even as having, having new members added to our team, you know, it hasn't been an issue. I just make okay. sure that whenever I go, mm -hmm. uh, into town, I make a specific effort to get to know people right, while I'm there. Right. So, so you almost have like a work visit list yeah. when you get there. Yes, yes. exactly. 
Excellent. And, and, and so when it comes, let's say, to collaboration, what are some mm -hmm. of the tools that you oftentimes use to make sure that you're on the same page with them? Yep. So we actually use several different video conferencing tools. Mm -hmm. We bounce around um, just dependent on people's preferences, honestly, okay. but we utilize WebEx and Zoom and then Slack. Okay. Slack is very, very important um, mm -hmm. across our organization. It just helps us stay organized right, too. Right. Um, just for those quick kind of one-off conversations, or um, I even work with people who are who are located in the UK, mm. and I can get on a quick Slack call with them and not have to deal with interesting dial-ins and right. all of that, and it just makes it so much easier. And then yeah. also Google Google Cloud platform. True. Um, that's definitely helpful as far as the applications. We use a ton of Google Sheets and uh, <laughs> Google Calendar and everything, so it definitely helps. Google, Google, Google. I know, yes. I know. Live the Google life, yes. And, and just curious, so how would you say your leadership skills have grown working remotely? Mm -hmm. And which ones would you say you have to focus on more so? So communication has definitely been a huge mm -hmm. Part of my growth, I would say, in the past year and a half that I've mm -hmm. been remote. Okay. Um, and so in regards to, to leadership is um, really looking at, okay, I only have so much time in front of these people. So if we right. have joint video calls, whatever mm -hmm. I'm saying, I want to make sure that I'm bringing value um, okay. to meetings right. or um, I'm making sure that before we hop off the phone that we are very clear. Yes. And that's important in, in on-site meetings, but I feel that there's a little bit more of a intention to be mm -hmm. a little bit more um, diligent about, hey, where are we on this? What are next steps? And you know, when are we meeting next? Mm -hmm. um, and so just to help things keep going, but also for me to, to help, help hold me accountable right. as well. Um, and also, I mean, just being able to speak clearly. I mean, mm. there's some things that you <laughs> type on Slack yeah. and you're not sure how that goes through because mm -hmm. you, you don't understand yes. all of the, the physical, you know, communication that, right. that gets right. communicated there. So um, I would say that's a huge, huge focus of mine in okay. relation there. So it sounds like part of it is one being visual, right. even though you're remote. Mm -hmm. The other part is looking for ways to add value right. when you do meet and being intentional mm -hmm. about the core things that you do. Right. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Very well said. <laughs> and, and, and so one of the things that, that like, when I first met you and I started working here about a couple months ago, is that you know everybody, right? You're, you're a networking queen, right? <laughs> and, and so curious, so what are some of the things that you do to connect with the greater community in this co-working space? I mean, it's really just, I'm interested in what other mm -hmm. people are okay. doing. And um, I mean, I'm, you see the same faces and mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious by nature and I'm curious what other people are working on. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said before, I'm, I'm a very social creature. Right. And so if I'm working on something hard, it rejuvenates me to have conversations um, with the people around me just mm -hmm. to kind of get that little social outlet and then I'll jump right back in. Right. Um, I, I don't, it's just always been a natural, okay. natural interest of mine mm -hmm. to just understand who people who are people and are. what they do. Okay. And, and so, so let's say there's other people that are going to join, mm -hmm. right? They also work for a large corporation mm -hmm. that's based somewhere else. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them if they were to come and start working in a co-working mm -hmm. space? So a big thing that I looked for whenever I was evaluating co-working spaces um, was the emphasis on community. Okay. And my advice would be to get involved in that community mm -hmm. um, because uh, as a remote worker, I think there's a pressure of I'm not there. I need to be mm -hmm. always on. And if I'm not at my desk, mm -hmm. you know, I want, I want my employer to know that I'm still providing value. <laughs> But when you look at it, even when I go back into the office, there'll be random conversation that um, comes up or, oh, there's a chili contest or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's still community and culture being created. And I think as not only an employee, but as a human, we need those mm -hmm. things. True. And to me, I mean, I don't know. I just think, I think it's just looking at this place. Okay, it's 
you're coming to an office and although these people aren't on the same payroll mm -hmm. as you, they're yeah. still your coworkers that you see every day. And so kind of tearing down those walls um, that you've kind of put up in your head and and really just making the most out of where you're going eight plus or less hours of your right. day. Okay. And, and how, how would you say working in this type of space has helped your career or helped it grow? Oh yeah. So um, perspective is, is the mm -hmm. biggest thing. Um, I find it really interesting to hear what other people are doing as far as maybe their role or mm -hmm. even uh, starting a different company. Right. Um, and so as a marketer, I think of, oh, like there's a company that they're just starting ground up. Wow, they can start in with this social campaign or they can talk to this person and this right. person and, you know, expand their market this way or it, it just gets my wheels turning. Mm -hmm. um, and what was the original question? I don't want to so, get too much of, <laughs> oh, on no, no, a tangent. No, 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 yeah. no, you were going good. Uh, so just uh, what have you, I kind of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but from a standpoint of um, what have you learned from working in this yeah. space and how has it helped your, your career? Right. Okay, yeah. So still making sure I'm on yeah. track. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, want yeah. to go too far. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll steer you back. Thank you. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, as far as just perspective yes mm -hmm. so um even taking people's energy i think mm -hmm. that's been a big thing is you know the xenos has a great culture great energy there but there's something to be said to see different size companies and work mm -hmm. along those people right. and talk about what they're going through and knowing it's kind of nice that oh yeah i can see we're on the trajectory of going that way or mm -hmm. hey we as a company kind of went through something similar right and even just looking from an overall business strategy, I'm still fairly new in my career, but it just gives me what I've learned is just different perspective on on different business strategies and, and growth, I guess you could say trajectories and what that looks mm. like. Um, and to see different people's roles that I may not interact with right. on a daily basis. For instance, like I'm in marketing and I mm -hmm. interact a lot with our sales and product marketing um, and product management, but I sit across from a cloud architect engineer mm -hmm. every day almost here. Right. And luckily that's still in my industry, but it's interesting mm -hmm. to hear perspective from someone that is in a completely different department like right, that. Right, right. So, so you're still able to learn about multiple industries, mm -hmm. uh, how different types of roles. Right. And also what's going on. Right. Just in the business world in itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Next, and so I have one last question for you, and this is the question I kind of ask to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so how can the viewers or the influencers that are watching this, this video, how can they help you grow? <laughs> I would say can, the questions like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I mean, even just pondering on where, what, am, what am I doing every day? Where mm -hmm. am I at in my life? And, what areas can I improve on? Mm -hmm. um, and so challenging, you know, your peers or right. your coworkers or your, your, your friends mm -hmm. um, in ways that, hey, is there anything you want to get better at? Is there something okay. you want to do? All right. um, and just taking a step back and looking, you know, we can't just move forward and do the same thing over mm -hmm. and over again or continue to do something the same way. I think it's great for people to step off of their comfort okay. zone. All right. So, so I'm going to ask you a question based upon something I just heard you say. So what are some of the things that you want to get better at? Huh. <laughs> That's great. Um, a good, I mean, going back to communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, that for me, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning my voice mm -hmm. as a business professional. Um, whenever, for instance, if there's something that we're sitting in a meeting and I don't necessarily agree with something, mm -hmm. I'm still learning to kind of make those challenging statements or to not rock the boat, but right. just interject with something that may be a little bit different from what the group thinks. Okay. Um, and also if it's time to push back, mm -hmm. it's okay to push back. Sure. I'm very much so a yes person. Yeah. I like to be challenged. Mm -hmm. I like to learn new things and, Oh, I've never done that before, but okay, let's do mm -hmm. it. Um, 
but I think there comes a point whenever you need to be able to push back. Yeah. And I think that's something yeah. for me where I need to learn how to kind of use my voice in those types of things. Okay. okay. Well, excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you again for the time. Uh, appreciate the, the conversation. Enjoyed it. Me and too. Uh, thank you. Thanks also, for having me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and if, the, if anyone wanted to reach out to you, what, what's a way that they potentially could? Yeah, um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I think name will be in yes, the file. Yes, I'll have it down, Perfect. down below. Um, yep, and then also if you, you can definitely provide my email as well. Okay. Definitely reach out. I love huh? networking mm -hmm. and conversations yes, yes. like this. She so. knows everybody here, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, well, thank you again. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the conversation I had today with Danielle and connect with her on LinkedIn. And also, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. All right, thanks again for watching. Looking forward to seeing you on the next episode.